Now to the story that has caught people's attention worldwide, the search for a missing submersible out in the Atlantic Ocean. And as of right now, there is just a half day's worth of oxygen left in that vessel. Obviously, it is now a race against time to not only find, but save the people on board if possible. In a moment, we'll hear from West Shoe Scott Heidler, who asked an underwater adventure expert why people want to go on these types of trips. But first, West Shoe's Jim Payne joins us in studio with why the Coast Guard says there is still hope. The U.S. Coast Guard is still calling this a search and rescue mission rather than a recovery mission. That's because there's still a chance rescuers might find the submersible with its five passengers alive. Rescue crews have now searched a section of the Atlantic Ocean that is twice the size of the state of Connecticut and two and a half miles deep. They're focusing on an area where banging noises were detected early this morning. We don't know uh, the source of uh, that noise, uh, but we've shared that information with Navy experts to classify it. In the meantime, it's something, it's a target, it's a focus for us to uh, look at. And so we've deployed the uh, uh, remote operated vehicles uh, and the surface vessel, uh, the Canadian uh, Coast Guard surface vessel that has sonar capability in the vicinity. The Coast Guard did send more ships to help with the search today. They joined eight vessels already there, including that Canadian Coast Guard ship with sonar capabilities, another ship with communication and navigation equipment, and a deep sea diving ship from France. Back to you, Stuart. Jim, thank you. What is it like inside of one of these small deep water vessels like the missing Titan? West Street Scott Heiler spoke with a local expert about what could have possibly gone wrong and why some people still take the risk. Like many across the country and the world, captivated by the story of the submersible Titan out in the Atlantic. Stephen Wood has insight on a similar vessel. He's a professor and chair of the Ocean Engineering Department at Florida Tech. The key point is, is uh, you have no space. You're very crammed in it. There are two aspects to focus on, according to Professor Wood. One, the immense pressure at that depth, unforgiving and deadly with the slightest hull issue. If there was a uh, catastrophic uh, failure, otherwise known as a small hole, the whole thing goes immediately, in which case nobody's alive. The second specific to this dive near the Titanic. They went down to a shipwreck. And the uh, most dangerous thing about a shipwreck is getting entangled in some of the parts. And that's happened before with submersibles exploring shipwrecks to deadly ends. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that it wasn't catastrophic and that they just got entangled and an ROV with the proper util ut tools or utilities on it uh, should be able to free them if that is what happened. But there's still the question of reaching them if they are entangled in time. Professor Wood on why he and others do this travel deep down in the ocean despite the clear danger if something unexpected occurs. When I go down to the bottom of the ocean looking at things which nobody else ever has seen, it is amazingly fascinating and it's exciting to be able to see these things and to actually get back science information. Every time you take a picture, that's new science that you're bringing back. In Melbourne, Scott Heidler, West 2 News.